Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in our modern C++ series. In this lesson, we're going to go ahead and continue looking at the standard template library, looking at the sorting operations available. So in the previous video, we went ahead and looked at sort and stable sort. So make sure you check that out so you can understand how they work and the differences between those two. But with that said, let's go ahead and look at some other useful operations for us, which we're going to look at is sorted and sort until. Now there's a reason to use that these two different sorting uh, operations that can some ways make our program more efficient. So let's go ahead and first scroll down uh, all the way down to our sorting operations here. Again, sorry for the fast scroll. <laughs> I'm going to want to go ahead and pull out is sorted and is sorted until. We'll see how these two sort of play together here, which is kind of nice. Uh, but first and foremost, there is a reason to have is sorted here. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about it maybe on the whiteboard a little bit, how we might use this. So if I have some collection like this here, and I'm going to put it dot, 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 and carefully write my indexes, one, two, three, four, and, you know, 10 million here or something, you know, some really large number, um, uh, or 100 uh, million <laughs> there. The idea is, well, you know, do I want to run a sorting algorithm on this, which takes me O of n log base 2 of n here, okay? So that could be potentially a big cost if this is a really large data structure. Maybe it contains really large, uh, you know, elements inside of each of these boxes that uh, moving them around in memory is expensive. You know, just try to try to think of that as a problem here. So rather than paying uh, this cost, O of n log n, well, we could just pay an O of n cost to just check, is this sorted? Does it need that sort, right? Versus rather just assuming it does and sorting it. And there's some clever ways where maybe you could encapsulate this, um, uh, this check here for is sorted here. So maybe you could, you know, lock this data structure or something and um, even if it is pretty large, do a linear search on it, uh, or, or rather a linear uh, check here by running the is sorted function uh, while holding a lock on it and then determining, yeah, I am going to need to, you know, set that data structure up for some sorting here. Uh, and we didn't look at it so much in the, uh, or we didn't really look at it at all, but you could see the sorting uh, algorithm from the previous lesson that you could actually provide various iterators to just sort a range or do partial sorts, for instance, if you also need access to this data here. So anyways, there's some interesting ways that you can work with uh, and manipulate things. But what I'm saying is there is a purpose for having this to check if your data is, needs to be sorted before doing a more expensive operation. OK, so something to think about uh, and is kind of neat here. So we've got is sorted, which basically just takes two iterators here. And again, is just going to literally place an iterator here into the range that you want, say the end here, and look and check if based off of some rule by default, it's going to check if this element is less than this one, which is less than, you know, the next one and the next one and so on. Uh, you know, you can put in some numbers there. Uh, that's the idea, but you can provide a custom comparator again. So you'll see that uh, here as well. Now, uh, since C++20, this can also be const expert, which is nice. So again, we want to stick with C++20 here. Maybe we'll look at an example as well here. Okay, so basically what I summarized is these rules here. Again, we're just checking based off the comparator. By default, it's just going to check, hey, is something uh, on the left side uh, or the lower index lower than the next uh, index over? Um, and that's the idea here, okay? And for is sorted, we just need a forward iterator. So most of our containers are just going to be able to use this uh, function here. Okay, even like forward list, list, vector, etc. Alrighty, uh, and then the complexity is uh, linear, as I mentioned here. Okay, now interestingly, uh, is sorted is basically implemented, <laughs> or, uh, or possible implementation, I should say, is to use is sorted until, okay, which is just going to take two iterators here. And then we can check and see, well, you know, does this function return the last uh, element here? Okay, so you'll notice a difference here with is sorted until returns us an iterator. Okay, so that would be the first element that is unsorted. Okay, so that could be, again, handy if you're trying to figure out if you want to do like some sort of partial sort or some other operation, for instance. Okay, and again, there's clever ways that you can use these building blocks together. For instance, if you find out we're sorted until, uh, you know, this element here, whatever the next element is, you could do a partial sort here, and then maybe you could do like a different um, 
algorithm that that sorts elements just adjacent ones or something you know that's that's faster okay so anyways lots of different options uh, that we have here so let's go ahead and look at is sorted let's just go ahead and give ourselves um, a little uh, example and create maybe a vector here uh, I'm gonna do integer specifically in this video here uh, let's go ahead and give ourselves uh, some increasing numbers here and negative 11 something like that here and let's give ourselves let's give ourselves one that is sorted and one that's not sorted here okay and give some duplicates um you know just to see that that holds here okay so we've got here um b1 and b2 okay so let's just go ahead and print off uh standard is sorted uh v1 uh, and we need to look at the from the beginning to uh, the end here. Okay. Uh, alrighty. So it looks like I got all my parentheses in order here. And let's go ahead and do the same here for V2. Okay. Make sure that we have the same data type there. Okay. And let's go ahead and compile this. Uh, I'm going to use C20 here. Main and compile. Okay. Compile. And if I run it, uh, well, we get one zero, which is the uh, result we want, but let's go ahead and give ourselves uh, an end line here so we can kind of interpret this. Uh, there we go. Uh, extra semicolon there. Okay. Uh, so just so you can see what's going on, actually, we can get this on one line, which is nice. Um, uh, one, of course, being a true value and zero being false here okay so this one is sorted okay even if we have duplicate elements right they can be equal that's still sorted but this one of course uh we get a negative value okay so for this you know more interesting case with v2 let's see where it is uh sorted until okay let's see if we can find that value here so let's go ahead and run is sorted until and we're going to look at v2 from the beginning uh to the end and we want to hold on to some uh, you know, the offending value that was not sorted here. Uh, I'm just going to call it IT for the iterator here. Um, and then let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and just print out that value. Uh, so let's see. Uh, and let's call it, let's see, is it going to give us negative 11 or is it going to give us 10 here? Because it's sorted until, uh, let's see, uh, let's see. Sorted until... I'll put a colon. Go ahead and compile it. Sorted until negative 11. Okay, so it is giving us that iterator right there. That's the offending value here uh, that we might want to, again, do something with. Maybe we remove it. Maybe we um, you know, do a partial sort from that range. Maybe we do a complete sort uh, of our data. And again, that's going to depend a little bit on um, you know, the structure of a program doing a partial sort from like, you know, these last right, negative 11 should be the first uh, element here. So, you know, we, we truly if if we sort, we have to sort this whole uh, collection. Again, that that seems reasonable, though. OK, uh, now let's go ahead and show a few other things here again, just to, you know, swap out a data structure here. Let's go ahead and put in a list this time just to see, you know, how generic are these things still works. OK, so um, because, again, we're just taking a forward iterator, which a list supports here. Um, now, let's do something a little bit interesting here. Uh, now, what if I have a uh, static assert here? And what I want to do here is use this is sorted function here uh, is sorted. Uh, and let's go ahead and do V1 uh, first. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. Uh, and then, you know, some message here. Uh, oops, uh, let me put that back here. Oops, sorry, going uh, crazy with my Vim. Uh, V1 is sorted. Okay. Uh, or we want to assert that this is true. Uh, okay, so that seems fine. Let's compile. Uh, oops, what have I done here? And let's see. Okay, it's just going to be complaining a little bit here. Um, actually, this is going to be a little bit more work than what I want to do. Basically, uh, I need to make this um, vector const expert, I suppose, here. I could sort of cheat here a little bit just to uh, let's just show something here. I can use an array. Uh, arrays are really nice for const expert because we know that they're not going to change size here. Uh, so let's just go ahead and, um, you know, without messing up this example too, too much here. 
here we go. Let's just go ahead and create an array of seven inches. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven here. I'll call it V1 here. And now I can statically assert uh, from the beginning to the end here and see that it's uh, sorted here. Okay, so again, this is just going a little bit uh, further here. Oops, let's see, what do they do here? Uh, V1 uh, is sorted. Uh, oh, it's not usable because, let's see, we need to mark it that there's a possibility that we can evaluate this thing at compile time, okay? Um, so this is kind of cool because we can see that it's sorted here. Uh, that's our assertion here. Uh, okay, and we can also say v1 is not sorted. Uh, let's go ahead and put like negative 11 here. So we should get an assertion at compile time here. Uh, again, this is a nice thing when I keep talking about in these videos, if you have something that's const expert here, okay? Uh, maybe a little bit more work to do this with a vector here. Like probably need to, uh, you know, set the size uh, specifically and mark it as const expert as well. But anyways, uh, with arrays, we know at compile time, yeah, this is seven elements. They're all integers, etc. Iterators aren't moving and so on and so on. Uh, so anyways, folks, uh, hope that makes sense here. We've got is sorted. Uh, we looked at is sorted until. And then we even looked at this fun uh, static assert here. Uh, and actually, I'll just comment this uh, out here. Let's go ahead and put it in our sort of original form here. But... Um, you know, just getting into some of the more powerful things, revisiting static assert, which we've looked at. Um, but again, some nice things that we could do here, maybe at compile time, maybe also at runtime as well, that I think are going to be useful. Alrighty, folks. So with that said, uh, I'll go ahead and flip you over and remind you about courses.mshot.io. If you're following along on the C++ programming series here, lots of good information, all that same stuff on static assert uh, covered much earlier in the series here, but nice to do a review and track your progress. Uh, and as always, folks, thanks for your time and attention. Special shout out to those uh, members who are supporting this channel. Really appreciate that support. And uh, drop in the discussion and let me know if you've done something cool with static asserts here and checking if something's sorted and then maybe doing some, you know, fun operation or something. Uh, even better if you can do it at compile time. I think those are really neat uh, things to play around with. Anyways, folks, with that said, thank you for your time and attention, and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one.